Did you know the first person that legally owned the black slave for life was a black man. Yes, you heard me right. In 1655, a black man named Anthony Johnson became the first person to legally own a black slave for life in the English colonies in what is now the United States. Anthony Johnson, originally captured in Angola, started life in the English colonies as an indentured servant, which meant he had to work for a contracted period of time. After completing his contracted period, Anthony Johnson gained his freedom and soon became very successful. He owned a 250-acre piece of land, which was quite a significant achievement, especially for a black man. He soon employed a small group of indentured servants to work for him. Among these were four white workers and a black worker called John Caso. You see, indentured servitude was a common practice in early colonial America. In this system, workers had no choice of their employers. They were bound by a legal contract that detailed the terms and duration of their service, which typically ranged from several years to several decades. In return for their labor, indentured workers received various benefits, like passage to a new colony, food, shelter, a piece of land, etc. But once their service period ended, they became free men, so technically there were no lifelong slaves only indentured servants who gained their freedom after the agreed specified time. In 1653, John Caso went to meet Captain Goldsmith, who had earlier transferred his indenture rights to Anthony Johnson. Caso claimed that his indenture contract that bound him to work for a certain period had actually expired seven years earlier and he believed he was being held unlawfully by his now employer, Anthony Johnson. A neighboring white farmer named Robert Parker heard about Caso's complaint and convinced Johnson to release Caso from his contract. Robert Parker proceeded to offer Caso a job and the boat agreed a new indenture contract. But Anthony Johnson wasn't willing to let Caso go that easily. So in 1654, Anthony Johnson took the matter to the Northampton court, filing a lawsuit against Robert Parker in an attempt to get Caso back. Initially, the court ruled in favor of Robert Parker, confirming that John Caso was no longer bound to Anthony Johnson. Anthony Johnson was furious of the court's ruling, so he went back to court and appealed the decision. In 1655, the court surprisingly reversed its earlier ruling and concluded that Anthony Johnson still had a claim to John Caso. The court then ordered John Caso to be returned to Anthony Johnson as if he were nothing more than a walking animal. As if that wasn't bad enough, Robert Parker was ordered to pay the court fees. This ruling was very significant for the first time in the 13 colonies a person who had committed no crime was sentenced to a lifetime of slavery, setting a precedent that would shape the brutal history of slavery in America. While John Caso's case was indeed a significant moment, it wasn't the absolute first. In 1640, an indentured servant named John Punch ran away with two other indentured white workers. They were later captured and taken to court for damages by their employer. While the two escaped white workers received an extra three years added to their indentured service as punishment, John Punch, the black man who committed the same offense, was sentenced to a lifetime of servitude. This marked the first recorded case of permanent enslavement for a black person in the American colonies. Anthony Johnson of African descent, also a former indentured servant, unintentionally became the first person to legally enslave someone in a lifetime of bondage. 
the court's ruling in Anthony Johnson's favour was a really important moment in history. It was the first time in the early American settlement that a person who hadn't committed any crime was forced to work for the rest of their life without ever being able to be free. This decision was the starting point of legalized racial prejudice and it paved the ways for countless more Africans to suffer under the cruel system of slavery in America. So, what do you really make of Anthony Johnson? From one perspective, it's tempting to view him as a mere droplet in a swamp of a much larger brutal system. He was just one individual in a complex web of economic interest that allowed the brutality of slavery to flourish. Yet, on closer inspection, Anthony Johnson actively pursued legal action to keep another human being, John Kaso, in lifelong servitude. He actively fought for ownership over another human being. This decision was pivotal in setting a disturbing precedent in the institution of slavery. So what do you think about Anthony Johnson? Was he to blame for the barbaric treatment of African slaves in America? Or is he just a convenient excuse for the barbarism of slavery? Please leave a comment below. If you like this video, please consider subscribing so we can produce more videos like this. Thank you.